zote. Tushukuru zote kwa maombi. Baba yetu na Mungu wetu e, umekuwa mwema, umekuwa mwaminifu kwetu. Tunakushukuru kwa ibada zote ambazo tumekuwa nayo. Na zaidi ya yote huu e, wiki hii tumekuwa katika conference na Bwana umetusaidia kupitia kwa uwezo wako. Tumembarikiwa na tumeona Bwana ukitunua nafsi zetu zimekuwa refreshed maana wewe ni mwaminifu. Asante kwa nafasi ingine umetupatia e, kuja mbele zako na Mungu e, kukuita na kuleta mahitaji yetu pamoja na theme yetu ya ya conference yetu kwamba we have to hold on to our faith. Mungu utatusaidia. Naomba Yesu tunapoanza ibada yetu ya pili ukatusaidie neema yako ikatutoshe kimbali yako ikazidi kuwa pamoja nasi nikiwaombea wapendwa hawa wa praise and worship wako na kazi na unduma ya kuleta kanisa pamoja na kutuinua tunapoingia katika hali ya kuambudu na kukushiriki pamoja katika hali ya kukuita kwa sababu ya hii ibada wasaidie wape neema na Bwana usaidie wapendwa hawa wamejitahidi kuja katika ibada hii wape neema katika jina la Yesu sande kwa ajili ya mnenaji wetu Bwana ukazidi kumuandaa na kumpa kibali zaidi na zaidi tunapozidi kuungana katika hii ibada neema yako itutoshe na Bwana ukazidi kuwa pamoja nasi na katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba na kuamini amen, amen. Tulikumbaliana katika wiki hii kuna vitu vitano vinahitajika. Hizo lazima tu inspect. Na kama hauna, tunaomba tafadhali ukae kule nje kuna tent yako ya kungojea huko. Kitu cha kwanza nataka ushike vizuri inaitwa your bible. Please you need your bible. Let me see whether you have your bibles. Kama iko kwa simu you pretend it is there. I know at all siongope. It is there because I also have one in the phone. I'm not saying it's not as a phone, okay? May the Lord speak to you through the ministry of that word. In Jesus name. Tulisema mtu wa IIC very serious IIC members they carry a notebook. They don't just come with the empty hands. Let me see your notebook. Wow, beautiful. Even if it's on the phone you know simu yako because that's where you write. May the Lord give you something to put in those papers and those screens. And then tukasema mwana IIC hawezi kuomba kalamu. Point ikisemwa nisaidie kalamu harakisha kabla aende. Tukasema mwana IIC anabebaka kalamu. Hebu nione kalamu yako mali iko. May the Lord give you something to write using that pen. It is amazing. Then we say number four, the most important. Mwana ya isi ubeba pesa. Pesa, pesa mfukoni. Pesa kwa simu. Wangabi wamebeba pesa kama mimi. Nimebeba pesa. Usiseme ni ya nini? Pesa tuiko. Aha. Kanulu nimeona pesa ziminuliwa mbingi. After I preach, we will take your money. That money can become offering, can become a tithe, can become building, can do CD. Even now, kuna kambu inanza. Na kuna manafunzi labda ajalipa. That money can even boost a student. Unaweza peleka mwanafunzi mmoja even leo useme wacha nilipe. How much are they paying? 2000. You can just take one and say nitalipea mmoja hata kama sina mtoto angalau aende asikie neno la Mungu. So the money can be useful and is useful. May the Lord bless your money and keep you with the money all through to the end of the year. And finally we said you need a teachable heart. Lazima ubebe moyo wa kufundishwa. Uwe mtu ambaye unataka kufundishwa. Kama unataka kufundisha inua mkono wako hivi tu kidogo. To Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus, as my brothers pray that you may teach and instruct and fill us with your direction in Jesus name. Amen. So stay in the book of Ruth chapter number Ruth chapter 1 verse number 1 to 18. Thank you young lady for reading it so well. Allow me to run that one more time as we give our pastor the blessings. Anytime you walk we won't be offended. We have we are in agreement with you. Isalimia watu watonoka sana. The reading of God's word a second time, even a third time is useful. Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land of in the land, and a man of Bethel, from Bethlehem named Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. I want you to mark those countries Moab, Judah, Bethlehem because there's a lot of implication for them. The man's name was Elimelech and his wife's name was Naomi and the names of the two sons were Mahalon and Kilion. 
They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with the two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpha, the other named Ruth. And after they had lived there about 10 years, mark those please, 10 years of living in a foreign land, the Bible says both Mahalon and Kilion had also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. That's a very unfortunate situation. May the Lord not give you that situation. It needs a lot of grace. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return from there. But with the, her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to the daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. I wonder why they are not told to go to their father's homes. Go to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness or show kindness to you as you have always shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. And then verse 11 says, but Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to two sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this they wept, then offer kissed her mother-in-law. Goodbye. But... Ruth clagged to her. I want you to underline that phrase, but Ruth clagged to her mother-in-law. Look, Naomi, Naomi, say Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back and her, to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you, you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separate you and me. When Naomi realized Ruth was determined, or was serious, or was committed to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women left until they came to Bethlehem, and when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? The book of Ruth is very interesting for those of you who may have a hard time to read it. And one of the things I would like you to notice is that as I was teaching this week, so many things kept coming. This is not in my notes. But I want you to notice there are four D moments in the book of Ruth. Let me mention them quickly before I go to the notes. There are four D. It's a key D. I like the teaching. The key have and all that. There are Ds that describe the book of uh, Ruth. One, it begins with a displacement. D number one. There is a total displacement at the first chapter of, 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 of Ruth. You are noticing a family being displaced from their culture, their language, their way of life, their relatives, their friends, their connections, their networks. And then the second one, as a result of the displacement, there is a distress. They get to a distress because they are going to be experiencing a new world, a new moment, a new experience that have not been theirs. And there are situations that come that make them distressed. But thirdly, Whenever you are in distress for a long time and nobody is coming, you slide into a state of despair. There is a third D, despair. That book points you to a time when people are displaced. People have been displaced in Kenya from their work, 
People have dis been displaced in their morality. People even don't, even some of them don't know whether they are men or women. Gender, I gender issues. And so sometimes we get displacement that happen. And then when we are displaced, we get distressed. And I think when I talk to the pastor, Kalulu and Penina, one of the things that came out is that according to them as pastors, they notice where Kenya is. Many believers are under distress. There is something displacing your joy, your peace, your comfort, your even security. And then when they were go to that point, then the, po the fourth dangerous point was death. Because now we have a series of deaths coming, and we have Elimelech dying, and then the son, the two sons dying, and we have two widows where we have a situation. And, and so all the three Ds always will challenge the fourth D. And I want you to put the fifth D there, Yamwisho, and that is destiny is at, 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 at stake. So you notice that your destiny becomes at stake if you are displaced, you are under distress, you despair, and death comes. The questions of destiny become a reality. And one of the things we want to maintain so that we don't lose our destiny, which is to be with the Lord Jesus, is to say we must hold on to the faith that has been said to us. Those of you who are able to come on the screen now, I'm going to be following quickly. I want you to keep in the book of, of Ruth. Four days are important, but five must be remembered. Let me speak like the proverbial man. You must always remember... If you must really get to your destiny, be aware of the four Ds. Because sometimes a girlfriend can displace you, a boyfriend can displace you, spiritually, emotionally, financially. Sometimes in-laws can drain you. I'm grateful you talked about in-laws. And I'm sensing a state at which in Kenya, we are experiencing some spiritual displacement without knowing. Actually, one of the things I'm learning to handle is the phone. I'm learning afresh. I'm like a small baby. Learning to say, can I stay without handling this? Because it's a compulsive addiction. So that sometimes you realize praying, watching a clip is easier than praying. And they're still using the same phone to tune a guitar. I, I find the phone very interesting. You can still use it to tune the guitar, you can tune the drums, it can give you what you need. But the same phone can eat into your time until you find even closing your eyes for five minutes is difficult. There's a sort of displacement happening, and I'm going to be asking you if your destiny is going to be very correct and clear, you must decide, no matter the deeds I experienced like the book of Ruth, I will stand firm. So those of you who are here on Thursday, and you can go to the clips and record, records and check on them, they will be able to get you going. And those of you who are able to come along, the theme of this year's AIC Baraki conference has been holding on to faith. Even when we are in the midst of the four deadly deeds that keep people drained in their lives. And so we said holding on to faith. Our theme verse, and we have been revising this every time, is Mark chapter 4 verse 40. And everybody, please read with me because I know you can read. What does it say? If you just came, we said we, we read it in a way that the devil will know we, know we mean it. So read with a lot of voice. Together we say, what did he say? He said to his disciples. Yes. Why are you so afraid? Yes. I can imagine God asking Naomi, yes, Elimelech is dead. Yes, your two sons are dead. But why are you afraid? Do you still don't have faith that I am holding you by your hands? And that's what we're looking at. So on Thursday, we did part one, and the topic was when Jesus is on board. We go through hard times in life, but as long as we know Jesus is on board, is part of it, we know it shall be well. Then day two on Friday, we said he's not just on the boat. When Jesus is on it, if he says I'm handling your situation, you have no reason to worry, even if the bleeding has taken 12 years. Even if somebody tells you your daughter is already dead. That is what we looked at, Jairus. So long as you know Jesus is on it, it doesn't matter the state and the time. You will accomplish it. Then yesterday, by the grace of God, we said when God says it, if he says it is going to be well, if he says you are crossing, and those of you who are here, you remember, we looked at that interesting story of Elijah with the two miracles, with Elijah being told, just go to Kerith. 
He may not have an answer. He may not be clear. He may not have explanation. There are gaps in the explanation. But Elijah moves without question. And yesterday I labored here by the grace of God to explain the power of a church, the power of musicians who are angered in the word. Let me tell you, you just see our brother talk about artists moving away to secular world. The likes of Bahati and the others who have already moved in. I can tell you gospel artists are, are in between a hard rock and, and, and a hard service. Most of them, the world gives money. You move in there and they present in a um, political event, 400,000 are given to you. You move in a church, they say, praise the Lord, God bless you and they keep you well. And you can easily say, where the money is flowing, then the gifts go there. But the devil is alive because he's trying to steal from the church. And what I'm seeing coming up with the young girls and young men playing these things gives us a lot of hope. When, when the church began commercializing gifts, <laughs> when we started paying for people to play a keyboard, we lost it. When we started paying for someone to sing, to sing in the praise and the worship, we started now commercializing what God has freely given to us. And so Malim was in despair. I hope the next time you get even more mature people plus the children are the best. So that we can have a team of many people. I remember days when I was growing in Okambani. We would never struggle. There was never a thought that you can play a guitar to be paid. I used to play the solo, my brother Baines, my sister Rhythm, my other brother Alikua, and you are solo, my neighbor's family, water Alikua. So we used to have duties, weekend in the Mutukus, weekend in the Kalulus, because people were gifted. But as we are commercializing, we begin to lose direction. So when God says it, doesn't matter where he tells you to go, you need to go. So we conclude today by saying, having known the three items, then we must by all costs remain unmoved. So the topic is unmoved. Nikisha kujua mungu amesema hivi na amesimamia hii. My conclusion is I will be unmoved. Sita tingizika maisha ni mwangu. Hata nione kama kuna delay. Tumeoana miaka tatu imeteremuka tujapata mutoto. Did you notice penina because you are penina of the Bible who got children but Anna was not getting. Did you notice there is a drama in this book? Did you notice there is a drama in this book mwalimu? That it is already 10 years in the marriage. Watoto wawili wamekufa na wajaza for 10 years. There was a big problem in this community. Can you imagine watoto wa Elmelech na Ruth walikuwa wameoa. The Bible records after 10 years without a father, they passed on. So I'm, I'm asking, kumbe hata Ruth yali experience miaka kumi bila mutoto. Now let me say this. And delay in a human process is not a change of the mission of God. Let me say that again. And delay in the human process is not a change in the mission of God. Sarah becomes a mother at 90s. But the good news about the book of Ruth, the very lady, when Yalika and Bila Mutoto 10 years, the very Mwanamuke Alikwa ni a foreigner from foreign land Moabite. The very lady becomes the story we will be reading in Christmas. You can never read the story of Jesus without mentioning Ruth. And delay in a human process is not a change in the mission of God. They can delay promoting you. They can delay having children. But that does not mean the mission of God has been changed. God's mission remains intact. One of the greatest challenges in our faith walk is that of distractions. Kama kuna kitu kina tukwaza kwa imani yetu. I don't know Malimo you experience in Okambani and in Nairobi, but there is so much distractions that I'm seeing so many people start so well with God, but along the way they become distracted. If there is anything that is really bothering my spirit about the church of Christ, it's not elections. Ladies, we talk up and then we select. That's a very simple process. But if there is anything I'm crying for the church, is the inability to conquer destruction that stand our way. I will not define there. Destruction, of course, is anything that takes your focus, your concentration, and your intention from its, its direction to something else. What you need to know is if you are in this world, our lives on the earthly earth, on, on the earth, 
are characterized by three th things about faith. One, we will always have faith movers. Things that zinatingiza. They move with money to. Secondly, our lives are marked by shakers. Things that will shake your faith. A situation that will shake your faith. When I was growing up, I keep telling you that I was, um, my mother kept nurturing us and somebody, for some reason, yakachokosana my mom, and when they were cleaning me up, akachukua maji, akaniwekelea kwa, kwa, kwa masikio ikaja, akini clean, nikiwa three years. So when I was three years old, I lost hearing. I lost both eardrums because maji ilingia ikakaa andani. I would, you know what, what, what that looks like. Na nemutu walikuwa na punish my mother through me. Okay? So then that situation made me lose my hearing. Ever since I was three years, I developed a very bad shape. Masikio yangu ikakuwa na infection. Nikaanza kutoka na usaa mbaya sana. Then by the grace of God, around three, five years, one of the here recovered graciously. And I've been on one here for my life. I'm 50 plus. I'm not a young boy. I've been working on one here. All through. You look at me. You think I'm okay in terms of looking at me. But I have used one here in my life. I've sat in radio station with one here. I've sat in the university to speak to over 10,000 students with one here. I've spoken to who is who with one here. Because they say there will be things that will move your faith. But an interruption of a human process is not an interruption of God's mission. I need you to notice that. You might get interrupted in your marriage and things happen, but don't confuse an interruption of human process with an interruption of God's mission. Moses is dead. Joshua, rise up. My mission is not dead. We must continue the mission. And I'm today grateful that even after 50 years of life, I'm still enjoying preaching and living a healthy life. Not, not bothered, but there are things that I would have begun complaining and pointing to people here and there complaining. Let me tell you why distractions come. They come for three functions. One, distractions act as operatives that are attention grabbers. So that instead of you looking at Jesus, something draws your attention to something else. Instead of you, Kumutanzama, yes, which was our theme last year, you realize things are coming that tell you look at money. Look at, look at. My brother, apart from being a, um, um, an in-law, I know how expensive it is to teach one instrument in Kenya today. If you are driven by money, you never come to Mombasa to meet 14 people. It takes a man who says, my attention is in Jesus, and when I'm getting hold, I will see some young men playing the flute, I'll be able to tell Jesus, I did something for you. The second distraction is intention, or mission, is what we call focus distorters. Sometimes some of these things come so that they distract your focus. So that you don't realize where you are going. And the third element is what we call commitment deviators. These are things that deviate your commitment so that your commitment is wanting. Yesterday I talked about commitment. And that is exactly something that I want to share very briefly, passionately. These operatives, because some of these come in to take your attention, I'm even witnessing my pastors across losing the direction of the gospel, preparing a suit, suitable, sweet gospel so that people can accept them. People using formulas so that they can get people to them. And you lose the focus, you are supposed to speak about Jesus alone. So these three are the, the outcomes of that. But let me caution you, please be aware, because sometimes distractions can become faith drawback. So that imani yako imeanza kufurutwa nyuma na his distractions, ama we call them faith holdbacks. Vitu vinashika imani yako nyuma ambazo aziwezi kukusimamisha. I saw my brother, we grew up in Melimani. Thank you so much. Simama to wave. They may not know what I'm talking about. We grew up in Melimani notes. And he will tell you, the many times I took them to the bushes to look for God. The many times I kept telling them, hold on to this. These are many years. He's in church. I'm on the pulpit. This actually is over 24 years since we met. Now when I see him and he sees me holding the mic and, and holding to the faith, you feel like jumping up and say, kumbe, this thing works. But if you hear mutuko waleo wa muke mwingine, akaacha yule akawa mwingine, nasikia meanza pombe, ata nasikia wasichana university ya watulii, 
unashanga what so was that faith real so I'm, 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 Benjamin, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see you. And then suppressors. These are things that suppress faith. And I'm going to ask you to observe from, as I close, the life of Ruth speaks to us that faith is possible even when you are a foreigner, even when you are in a difficult situation, you can hold on to faith and become something good for Jesus. You can even hold on to Actually, the book of Ruth teaches us the principle of holding on. That's what I want to look at. So how does that work for us? Holding on faith in such times and situations as this is a process. Kushikilea imaniako is not an instant issue. It's not something like a meal you go to the hotel and say, nipatia hii, nipatia hii. You don't produce a menu. You need a process. It's a process that calls for depth. It's a process calling for depth. Depth. <laughs> I wish I had a way to explain depth. Yani hii si kitu ambao natokea hapa hallelujah hallelujah. Nasikia Yesu anachoma hapa, nasikia anachoma hapa. I'm feeling nice. It requires depth. Depth goes beyond emotions and the feelings. Depth goes beyond just having people around you. Depth goes to being rooted. Colossians 2:8. Be rooted in the word so that you can have root. Will your anger hold in the storms of life? Rootedness, depth. Let me allow, allow me to run through the next few minutes and, and look at Ruth for a moment. Her name means friendship. One who is available to relate with the people, one who is accessible. I said yesterday, other than calling your daughters funny names. Why don't you try small names like this? If you call your daughter Ruth, hata kama umekosana mzee unakuta kameleta friendship nyumbani mwenu. Lakini ukieta mtu speedometer. <laughs> ukieta mtu majina na nasikia sijui what. Hata waje niseme tu nilisema jana. They will bring the same speed in your marriage. They will bring the same chaos in your marriage. Ruth means friendship. She's a Moabite. And we all know from Deuteronomy chapter 3, 23, verse 3, Moabites were a community that God declared they shall never be admitted to the community of God of Israel. So she's a complete foreigner. Mukiongea you are blessings, yeye na you are an outsider, a Moabite. But we also know she's married to a Jew a person from the Jewish community, a son of a Jewish man, Mahalon. But then in the process, we read that Ruth does not only get married, but along the way, she is this foreigner, kwa luka ya wetu, who ameangukia baati. Yani foreigner ameangukia baati tu. Nitumia luka hiyo. She is completely an outsider, an outsider, but she gets a chance to be married to a person of uniqueness. Some of you need to know this. I talked about it later yesterday. Moabites were fully informed about the nature of the Jewish Israel community. They knew the constitution and they had the full history of how Yahweh had walked with Israel. They had a full history of how Yahweh was managing and blessing Israel. So any foreigner was anticipating becoming a member. And there was only one way to become a member. Either you proselyte yourself or you be circumcised if you are an outsider to become legally a Jew. But there is one here who by the grace of God, wale mulikuwa bajana, God creates a wave in the name of famine, na hiyo wave emesukuma Elimelek na Naomi, wametoroka inji yao, wameenda kwa foreigners. To a foreign land, foreign culture, foreign king, foreign language, foreign gods, and they are within the Moabites. And when they were there, the boys were not stagnant, they were growing. 
they go to the age of marrying. And what do they do? The boys cannot find Jewish women there, so they marry women who look nice. That means they are entering a covenant. Some theologians suspect e kifoya el melek na kifoya watoto wake ilikuwa ni punishment ya Mungu kwa sababu alikuwa amewahi kuwaonya msijaribu kuwa na uhusiano. That's a suspicion by some theologians. We don't know. But the Bible records Ruth secured space. Offer secured a husband. But then along the process the Bible is very silent. It doesn't tell us Naomi akafiwa kwa sababu kulikuwa na but we notice the father dies. And then Naomi kind of she's comforted hata mzee akikufa in the Jewish setting if you had a boy. Na ndio naona hata wa Afrika leo kama hujazaa mfulana bado watu wanangangana kuzaa mfulana. And some of the boys are messing you up. Unangangana kupata mfulana unampeleka rehabilitation at the end of the day. Look at that. So there is no hope in having a gender. Sitting there in a marriage and saying, if we don't have a boy, we are weaker marriage. Your marriage is not equality because of the gender of, of the children. It is quality because of where you are angering your marriage. It's not about gender. So this, this woman, woman notices the husband is dead and the two sons are married. But something interesting happened. So Ruth experiences a heartbreak experience because her father-in-law dies our brother-in-law dies, our own husband dies. She is in a very heart-breaking experience. She has what we call faith-breaking moments. She is actually finding herself, I really wanted to follow Yahweh. I pulled up accept this marriage so that I can become a part of the blessing, but I'm now an outsider. Yet, katika hiyo faith-breaking moment, she held on to the end. Kenyans, all of you watching online and following me, you know we are in a very faith and heartbreaking moment in Kenya. If you are like me, you go to the supermarket, you wonder whether somebody has stolen your money. The other day, I almost found myself quarreling in general money petrol station. Now, Melissa, we could show me where I love him, Billy. Because I'm a worker, machine on Asia 2000. Like in Ngariangu, indicator. It is not in behaving. So we are fighting. Na mwambie hapana, hata ingesonga kidogo nione imesonga. Alafu naanza kumulecha. Na mwambie wakati ilikuwa naweka 500 ilikuwa inasonga kiwango hii. Sasa naweka 1200 inasonga kiwango hii. Hii nayo inakuwa namna gani? Then I realize I'm making a long a wrong debate because now the the, the mafuta is at 217. Then I was buying at 125 150. That was different. The times are very hard. But yet Ruth held on. The question I want to close with is, what is this thing why Ruth really held on? What is the thing that kept Ruth holding in place? And that's what I recommend to AIC Baraki. It's a principle that she held on to. It's a commitment she had. Ruth held to a principle of a binding. A principle of nashikilia. Atakama sielewi. Na atakama sioni, nitaka pale. If you allow me, I'm going to run a bit fast. My time is running more than I could imagine. Um, I want to explain this principle. It is in John, if you remember, it's John 15. If you remain in me and my word remain in you, it doesn't matter when you have a root or a you will stand the test of the times because I'm holding you. If you remain in me, if you abide in me and remain in me, and let me tell you, married people, sometimes some marriages go tough. But if you remain and decide I'm going to abide, but be correct. I'm not saying you stay when you're being killed. But I'm saying you abide when you're focused. If you decide I'm going to hold on. I want to share with you five pillars that hold this principle. Remember the theme is holding on to. Holding on to something. But that impl implies that we must hold on to. As from the book of Ruth, there are five commitments that I see. The first one is in chapter 1, verse 3 of that book. If you turn there with me for a moment. The Bible says in chapter 1, verse 3, Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. She married Moabite women. They married Moabite women, one 
offer the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Mahalon and Achillion also died. The first commitment I see in the life of Ruth is a commitment to resolutions. She had a resolve. She had a clear decision. I am decided. I am a foreigner, but I, am an, I have an inner resolution that I will be married to this family. Now look at this. With the husband alive or not, with the children or not children, I am resolved. Nimeamua kwa moyo wangu, nitaolewa hapa. I, thought, I want to ask the men to clap for the ladies. Please, men, appreciate women. Asanden, son. Thank you. We salute you. I wish I can have the time to salute you. Na angalianga muke wangu anatoka milimania machakos. Na nimemuwa hapa kathonzweni. A plain, dry place. God is good. God is good. In fact, ladies, I salute you. Hata unaolewa njami ingi unakuta wanatsengenyo na urogi, unaolewa njami ingi unakuta waru ni walevi, brother na mume wako wasikizani, but somehow, ili usurvive in marriage, you must start with the principle of tupate watoto ama tuzipate watoto. Wawe ni warogi ama si warogi, nitaolewa. That is the beginning power that holds faith in place. Mungu anibariki na kijana ama sinibariki na kijana Mungu anipatie promotion ama simpatie promotion my resolution is one nitasimama na kufuata Yesu niwe elected ama ni siwe elected ladies mkienda kuchagwana tafadhali hata kama jina lako liko pale na usipochaguliwa resolve uchaguzi ama uchaguzi usipo i will hold on to the faith na tusiweke kanisa Mungu wa vita ambavyo havina maneno that is the first thing and that's why I don't know who will help our pastors and the AIC bishops and DCC chairman why AIC Kenya. People are sending what? Munichagwe. Who are you? Munichagwe. Sometimes I, I get surprised. I love I'm hearing some even in breaking churches when I say mwacha hii yetu enda kanisa ingini. Kanisa inatoka hapa mbaraki inapeleko ukambani kule kitui. Inakuwa AIC mbaraki kwa DCC ya kitui. Ni mutu anataka power. The first thing that will help you, friends, let me tell you, sometimes we work with very hard people, but there is always a principle that keeps a person going called the commitment to a resolution. This woman in you, I'm an outsider. I may not have children, but I am coming to this relationship with a resolution. I have decided to follow Jesus. No, no turning back. No turning back. I love the Kikuyus. Any Kikuyus in the house? Thank you. Any other Kikuyus in the house? Mutani kwa nifamia. Lakini mukikuyu wakiolewa. Kitu cha kwanza kupewa kama zawadi ni kitanda. Anakumbushwa. Kikiumana huko omenda. Hakuna kitanda kulala hapa. Kaa huko. Kaa huko. The Kikuyus are very wise. Ukiolewa tu unapewa kitanda unaambiwa si tumekupea kitanda yako tumekulea tumekuchunga ama na kitanda cha kikiumana lalia kitanda chako huko hata kama utalalia nje no turning back friends if you decide it is Jesus it's not about anything else Jesus and Jesus alone tell your neighbor i go for Jesus principle number 2 the one i see is a commitment to stand look at this woman Ruth is this woman who says, I am bind. The principle of a bind stands on the five pillars. The second pillar is a commitment just to stand. This is not just a physical exercise. It's a commitment to hold on to what you have already professed. A commitment to hold on to what you have purpose in your... For example, I had told myself I will not marry when I'm not 28. That was my commitment. And for sure I got married when I was 29. I told God that I must stand like a rook and rook and bear young with a look a rook and rook and a bizarre semen. No, I was let a dowry. Nitango jea had sitaki koa mutoto and now mutoto mingin. You mean a physician marus nineteen twenty. Wananza kulea water kwa nyumba. Eee, 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 
Mimi kutaka mambo ya <laughs> ya kuwe bana tukalie. I wanted to be a man, a man who can be able to hold a woman and tell her my dear don't you cry. Fully prepared. Let me tell you, sometimes kufuata Yesu is very dangerous. You need a commitment to stand firm and say nitasengenywa lakini nitasimamia Yesu. Nitavurutwa lakini nitasimamia Yesu. Uwezi kuwa mtu wa kuangalia kila kona and imagine you can go. They say if you stop to throw a stone to every barking dog, you will never go anywhere. You everywhere there are barking dogs. Woo, woo. Wanza kunyamazisha kila mbwa, utaenda mahali. Kazi yako atakuwa kunyamazisha mbwa. Watu wameenda ngambo, ungali unanyamazisha mbwa. We, nyamasa, nyamasa. You must always take a stand and say mbwa wabweke, lakini mimi naelekea mahali naelekea. Museme ama mwamba it I am aware there are restrictions But I know this is a blessing Ruth said I have a stand Mom don't urge me to leave you Niko na musimamo May the Lord help us Thirdly There is a third principle A very simple principle to make under Moses It's a, called the commitment to refuse To learn or not only to, refuse, to say no But to say Nisha kata kauli Na nisha mua Na nimesema no I, I think I like that. That is when in verse, chapter 1 verse 14, notice what happens there. At that they wept together, then Ofa, Ofa, kissed a mother-in-law goodbye. Malimu, let me use you, kidogo. When you are two, there is some hope. Mukesema ato taiba mutiani amu taiba. But when you one, when you are two, Mumoja amesema mwisho yamefika. Mimi ni taiba. It becomes a big temptation. When we are standing with the mwalimu, I'm so strong because we are here we can talk, we can talk. But can you imagine saa hiyo Ruth alikuwa na wanachochiana, wanatiana moyo, ah tukae, ah tukae, ah tukae. Kidogo anaona offer anaambia mama yake, "Kwa heri mam, that was the biggest temptation for Ruth to say after all. Si hata yeye ameenda. Two are better than one." But Ruth said, whether my opponent goes, I am not defined by my opponent's terms. I am Ruth. I am aware of what I want. I will go for what I want. I will not, because people are complaining in my company, let them keep shouting. But I'm not them, I'm myself. Do you know there are people sitting here who are getting promotion? What was there are people who are getting promoted every day. Because you are not the people. Wachana watu maofisi wapika kelele wa mbosi siwi CEO, siwi ameletwa nani, huyo ni Mukale, huyo ni Waruto, huyo ni Warigathe, huyo ni siwi Kalonzo, watu wetu wametolewa, siwi nani ametolewa. Watch hiyo drama yendele. But in the midst of that drama, say I refuse to be in the crowd. I want to be Ruth. I know what I'm chasing. Anakuna kitu kizuri kama kujua. Kumbe huyo mwanamuke Ruth ya likuwa mesha spot. So long as I'm on the side of Yahweh, it doesn't matter whether I have children, it doesn't matter whether I have a husband, so long as ni uko upande wa yawe, hapo siwezi tolewa, I will hold on to yawe, no matter what happens. By the way, there's a very interesting young man here. I wish this was midweek. Does anybody remember Moses? Church, at the nyuma. Unanyo, kanisela na nifuata nile kwa nyuma, ndiyo na nifuata kuliku wa wakombele. Wale wa nyuma, God bless you. Ninaona wana nifuata, I can tell. Does anybody remember Moses? Kuna wakati aliandoptiwa, akaenda kufanywa kuwa mtoto wa mama ambao si mama yake na mnakumbuka muujiza uliofanyika wakati msichana wa, wa farao ambao tuna suspect alikuwa na infertility challenge aliadopt kama mtoto kanalia akujua ameadopt agenda ya Mungu na wakati alikuwa nakalea akiuliza katalewa nani msichana Miriam that's why we need to be looking for good wise women young men don't look for the frame Young men, look at me. Frame is very deceiving. Size 8. <laughs> Can you change to size O? Ama ni wambia ye mwalimu. Mutu wanasama litaka ni kuwa oke wa ifi. I married my wife when she was, I don't know what size. She is now a meja. So if I was marrying frame and a shape, kuisha mimi. So when Moses was growing, Msichana akaenda Miriam akaambia mama yake kuna kazi ya kukuwa maid. 
Namwambia kuja uandikwe kazi. Mama alipoandikwa because when you are God's agenda how could Moses be brought up without the nutrients of a mother's breast milk? So the house girl became the mother became the house girl. So mama msichana farao akienda kazi mama anafungua kifua anaambia kijana nutrients ni zawana wa Mungu kunywa yote. Na ukumbuke utakapokujikuta wewe ni Muyahudi. That is why when Moses finds some guys fighting he tells them na bwana mnapigana because the mother drilled the consciousness that you are a Jew no matter where you are located. And that is why Hebrews 11:23 says by faith when Moses had grown he refused to be known as Pharaoh's daughter. He knew there is a better identity. You are better identity than being a Kamba and a Kikuyu from Kitui, from Muranga, from Kalajin. There is a better identity when you are a child of God. You have a better identity than that. Moses refused. Please for number four. The focus commitment. I love this lady. I don't need to stay there. Look at how this lady comes out. She says, Mom, verse 16, don't urge me to leave you. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And actually, she's almost telling her, where you'll be buried, I will be buried there. Almost to say, and in your resurrection, we'll resurrect together. That is a focus. Simply saying, wakati niliondoka muab, na nikasema yes to mahalon, my focus became clear. I'm hooked to a line of blessings. Na kifo, akita niondoa pale. Na, kifo, na, na mambo ya kufiwa na wazazi, akita niondoa pale. Then number five, the last one, is a risk commitment. I love this woman. I wish you can, you can capture this. Can you imagine how much risk it was, my brother, for a whole Moabite woman to join a woman who is a Jew, and then, thank you, and you are returning to the heart of Jewish community, when you know you are an outsider, Deuteronomy 23 verse 3, no Moabite is supposed to be admitted, and you are accompanying your mother in confidence. And then I love this woman. They get home, she realizes, Mami Awesi Kufa, she decides, even though it's a foreign land, nitaenda shamba. Kwa akina nani? Shamba na wanaume. Na wanaume wa Yahudi. So the risk of rape, the risk of exposure. And let me tell you, friends, some of you will never drive a car until you risk. Some of you will never build a house until you risk. Some of you will never make a meaningful movement in life until you risk. Risk is a critical, essential aspect of a believer's. You can never imagine comfort, comfort, comfort. There is risk. And I love this woman for this. I love the way she did it. She goes, and kufanya kazi pale. And now, somebody needs to hear me as I say the last word. They say, when God sees you at a risk point for him, he also risks on your behalf. Let me say that again. When in God notices umeamua kabisa kwa ajili yake ukufe, he risks on your behalf. So she goes to the shamba and answer kufuata wanaume. Hai, wanaume wanasema, huyo mama amekuja hapa ni muabait, tunasikia alikuwa ni na kinaruthi, watu walikufa wake na amekuja. Huyo mama ni ajabu. So a boas comes in, and when boas comes in, anaulisa, huyo mama anaokota pale wanamuambia, tangu alipokuja asubuhi ajasimama, she is collecting. May the soul of Muzemoi live forever. I tell you because I've served with Muzemoi in AC Milimani for about 10 years, and then I served him for seven years before he died. Those of you who watch the, the screen, you saw I was part of the program during the burial at Kabrak. Muze had his siku ya kifo, akipanda munayua shambake ni kubwa. He has this biblical principle. He let tractors ya kuokota chakula, ya maindi. He would use university buses to go and collect poor people, he knows because he was in the cabra, to collect poor people from a place called Kambia Moto, wanajia bus, anakuja na simomisha kwa shamba na wambia, ingieni muokote kila mtu. Na wakiokota magunia ya maindi, anawarusu wanapandisha kwa hiyo bus, na anawarudisha kwao. In fact, you would lose kasi kwa mze, ukenyi mao watu waokote hiyo chakula. I want to tell you, this woman risked. 
akiokota chakula i was imagining i always think ruth must be one of my, my must unajua jana nilikusema kuna watu wa kugreet tukifika mbinguni tengeneza list ya wale wao wanataka kusalimia mkifika mbinguni wachana na watu wa siasa wa Kenya au si wako salimia kuna watu wenye maana unamuuliza Ruth by the way ulikuwa serious yani ulikuwa unaenda kwa wanaume huko ongopa kuraipiwa you are even a foreigner and Ruth was advised by the mother enda pole pole anarudisha mama anamuuliza umetoa wapi anasema i decided to hold on to yawe finally boaz notices Ruth Whenever you stand for God you become visible. Somebody needs to hear me. Hata mboss akikaa tu anasema unaweza transfer watu wale ngine kiu transfer fulani. Unaweza promote watu lakini fulani ukianza anzisha na fulani you are visible. Boss akakuja akamwambia mimi nataka kuoa wewe. Alipotaka kuoa yeye hawakujua wanangojea nini. That boss akamwambia but before I marry you there is a closer relative who must first declare that to marry you if he is not able then i come in so wakaenda kwa the close relative akasema nataka kuoa akaambiwa kuoa kuna kuna usisha pia kuoa the 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 the, 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 the widow ai akasema no 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 hiyo kuoa mwabite mimi sitaki boss akasema all right i'm willing during that time if you wanted to show you are changing your position you would exchange sandals the lowest of the lowest to say at the very moment i have handed you over the very that of me that i can give and then you say now i can marry and boaz married ruth and now the history begins they go to know each other and they have ruth's firstborn by the name obed and then the bible moves obed became the father of waja twende pamoja na wewe tumalize ndio niombe mnaniangalia kama mnashtuka enda mwisho kabisa chapter 4 i love that So Boaz was 13. Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive 10 years, 15 years down the road in marriage and she conceived a son. The women say to Naomi, "Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous through Israel." He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age for your daughter in law who loves you sorry who loves you better to you bet who is whose love is better to you than seven sons has given birth then Naomi took the child laid her in her lap and cared for him the women living there and the women I appreciate you again the women living there where were the men the women living there said Naomi has a son and they named him Obed he was the father of Munisaidia he was the father of and the father of then this is the family line of Perez to merudisha Genesis Perez was the father of Ezron Ezron the father of Ram Ram the father of Abinadab Abinadab the father of Nashon Nashon the father of Solomon Solomon the father of Boaz ule Boaz wetu Boaz now the father of Obed ule Obed wetu now becomes the father of Jesse and Jesse becomes the father of David and from the house of David a savior why don't you give Jesus a clap for that you could be the savior of Kenya without knowing You could be the savior of Baraki without knowing. Look at that. Because of holding on to faith. A foreigner, a stranger, a woman without a child rises to drop a name in the global face. She becomes the mother, the great grandmother of Jesus Christ. That is to tell us When we hold on to faith there is a reward it's never in vain we become partakers in the blessings of god let us pray <laughs> heavenly father we thank you because of a testimony of a lady who was unmoved she was in every way an outsider kwa kila njia huyu Ruth alikuwa mtu wa nje kabisa hakufaa kuhesabika 
we may be outside the circles of recognition and the people noticing us. But so long as we are in the circle of the sight of Jesus, our future is bright. Today we embrace, even in our Kenya when the times are hard, vijana wetu wamevurutwa na mambo mengi hapa na pale. Wazazi wetu wamevurutwa na mambo mengi hali ya maisha imekuwa ngumu. Wakati umekuwa mngumu vijana wetu kujua ni L ama ni G ama ni B ama ni T ama ni Q ama ni I our identity is very confused by situations. But Ruth knowing who Yahweh the God of Israel was when she seized an opportunity to become a member she decided she was going to hold on to the faith in Yahweh. She never left Yahweh no matter the offers, no matter the push, no matter the temptations, no matter the experiences. She decided I will hold on to Yahweh. And that is why we read she becomes a wife to Boaz. Then he becomes a mother to Hobed. And then Hobed becomes a father to David. And David, then from David comes the big name, the son of Judah. Jesus, the savior of the world. Kumbe, when we hold on to our faith, we save generations. Kumbe, we save ministries. Kumbe, we save parents. Kumbe, when we hold on to faith, there is a reward at the end of the tunnel. Ni maombi yangu kwamba kila mshirika ameingia mahali hapa ambaye anayumba yumba kwa imani yake ambao anafikiria ni wakati wa kutoroka Mungu ambao anasikia ni wakati ambao si wa kuamini Mungu ninaomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo kusiwa mtu wa kusinzia we can look up to Ruth and say surely we have a role model one who was a hard pressed but she held on under five commitments and she produced the savior of the world. Father, I pray for AIC Baraki. Pray for all the families represented. I pray for all the young people represented. I pray for all the professionals represented. I pray for all the children represented. I pray for all the communities and the tribes represented. That in AIC Baraki under this roof, men and the women will purpose to be unmoved. No matter what is moving Kenyans, it is not going to move us. Floods will not move us. We will remain firm. Economic recession will not move us. We will remain firm because we belong to Yahweh. Change of morals, policies that are pressing, the theft existing, the systems of false teaching in our churches today that are even leading people to Shakaola and many other places will not move us. We choose as members of AIC Baraki to cross the year 2023 by saying, we remain unmoved. For we know God is on board. For we know God is on it. For we know when God says it, it shall come to pass. And therefore like Ruth, we can say, don't hurt me. Don't push me. Don't coerce me. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. I pray that we will say like Ruth, what you say will take serious. What your request will uphold. What you look for, we will stand for. Jehovah, may this church be found to honor Jesus. We love you. We honor you. May you send us with these words and moved. Just like Ruth. And so as we move to the next days, the fourth day of December tomorrow, as we move into the week of Christmas season, I pray that members of Baraki will recall, no matter what situation imuto na jikuta, they will remind themselves, I will stand unmoved because God is on board, because God is on it, and because I know what he says shall come to pass. He means it, he is true to it, and they will accomplish it. Jehovah be lifted, for we pray in Jesus' name.